In this video, we're going to be making a multi-tenanted role-based access control authentication API. If that sounds complicated, don't worry, it's not as complicated as it sounds, and we're going to step through it step by step in this video. Before we get started, there's just a little bit of housekeeping that we need to go through to make sure everything in the video is going to make sense to you. First up, I want to thank Neon for sponsoring this video. We're going to be writing some SQL in this video, and for that, we need an SQL database. When I thought of what the easiest way to get up and running with an SQL database, I instantly thought of Neon. Neon provides Postgres as a service with a really generous free tier. So we're going to get more into Neon throughout this video. So what are the features that we're going to be building? Well, first off, you're going to be able to create an application. And what I mean by an application is just a resource that all our users and our roles link back to. You're going to be able to register a user for an application. You're going to be able to log in. You're going to be able to create a role. You're going to be able to assign a role to a user. And we're going to check permissions with a guard. The features that we're going to be building out in this video are the bare minimum for this application, because I really want you to take this project and make it your own. So once you make it your own, you can put it in your portfolio and use it to land a job or even use it to build your next side project. So what are the technologies that we're going to be using? First off, we're going to be using Drizzle RRM. We're going to be using Fastify for the API layer. We're going to be using PostgreSQL with Neon. And of course, we're going to be using TypeScript. If you would like to follow along with this video, there's a few things that you're going to need to get up and running before you can start following along. First off, you'll need an editor. I'm going to be using VS Code. You'll need an instance of Node.js running. You'll need a database. I'm going to be using Neon, and this is by far the easiest way to get up and running. And you'll need a REST client. I'm going to be using Thunder Client inside of VS Code, but you could also use Postman. So next, what will you learn? Well, there's actually a ton of stuff to learn in this video. You're going to learn how to create a multi-tenanted application, and these sorts of applications are probably a lot more common than you realize. You're going to learn how to create a role-based access control system, and again, these are very common. You're going to learn some basic relational database concepts. You're going to learn a nice and neat file structure for backend services, and this is the file structure that I use in all of my videos. You're going to learn some TypeScript, some Fastify, some RESTful API design, and how to use Drizzle ORM, of course. So this is the data structure that we're going to be building out. So we're going to have an application, and because this is multi-tenanted, everything is going to link back to our application. So our user is going to link back to our application. Our roles are going to be specific to an application, and permissions are going to be specific to a role. So when I say multi-tenanted, what is an example of what this means? So in a traditional application, you might have a user that is unique by its email. Let's say you have test at example.com, there can be no other user in your system with that email. With a multi-tenanted application, that's not true. You're going to have a user, say test at example.com, and they're going to be registered against an application. So their application ID with their email must be unique. But you could have that same user registered under a different application ID. So an example of this might be something like Shopify. So an example of this is something like Shopify. Shopify doesn't deploy a new instance of their service for every shop that they have. They just deploy one instance of their service and every shop, in our case here, an application, and every shop can have its own set of users. So let's say you and your next door neighbor both have a shop. In our case, you would both have an application. Then somebody can come along and they can register for your shop and make a purchase, but they can also register for your neighbor's shop and make a purchase. Now their accounts are going to be separate, but they're all running on the same infrastructure. So this is the data flow that we're going to build. A request is going to come in on a route. It's going to go through our controller and a controller here is going to control all of our business logic. It's going to go to our service and our service is responsible for making requests to our database. We don't, for example, have requests to our database made directly from the controller. The reason that I like to separate this out is so, for example, let's say you want to add some metrics to measure the, all the request and response times from your database. Now you only have one layer of your application to add these metrics in. So this is the structure of the video that we're going to be following. But if you have a look in the description below, you'll see some timestamps and you'll also see a link to the GitHub repository. Inside of the GitHub repository, you're going to see some helpful files. The first one is this CMD file here and it's a CMD markdown file, and this is going to include some commands that we're going to be using throughout the video. The second helpful file is going to be this api.json. Now this api.json can be used inside of Thunder Client, a VS Code extension, 
And you can import this file here. And this is going to import the user API collection that I'm going to be using throughout this video. So let's dive in and start writing some code. So the first thing I want to do is to create a new folder and I'm going to call this source. And this is going to house all of our source code. So the first thing that I want to do is to open up this CMD file here and I'm going to copy this command to install some dependencies. I'm going to open up a new terminal and paste it into the terminal. The next command that I'm going to copy is to install our dev dependencies. I'm using pmpm here, but you can use yarn or npm, the choice is yours. After my dev dependencies have finished installing, I want to initialize a new TypeScript project, and I can do that with mpx tsc init. And after I've done that, it's going to create this tsconfig file here for me. So now that I have all my dependencies installed, I want to create a new folder and I'm going to call this source. And this is going to house all of our source code. Inside of source, I'm going to create one file and I'll call this main.ts. Instead of main.ts, I just want to console.log. Hello world. Now we need a way to run this file. So I think the easiest way to do this is with TSX. So inside of package.json, we want to create a new scripts. And inside of scripts, I want to create a dev script and I want to run TSX watch. And now I need to point to our main.ts file here. I'm going to say source slash main.ts and save that. Now we can do pmpm dev and we see hello world. So this means that we're good to go. So the first thing that I want to set up is a instance of Fastify. Now I like to set up my instance of Fastify in one file and then I like to start the server in my main.ts. The reason I like to do this is because if you ever need to test your Fastify server, this makes it really easy because you can use our server file inside of all of your tests. So I'm going to create a new folder inside of SRC and I'm going to call this utils. Inside of utils, I'm going to create a file called server.ts. Inside of server.ts, I'm going to import Fastify from Fastify. Now I'm going to export a function and I'm going to call this function build server. And this needs to be an async function. Now I'm going to say const app is equal to Fastify and then we can execute that. If you like, you can put some logging options in here. So I can say logger and I can give this an object of configuration or I can just say log out true. And this is just going to log out all of your HTTP requests. The last thing we want to do in server for now is just return our app. Down here is where we're going to register all of our plugins. And we're also going to register our routes. So let's come back to main.ts. And I just want to create a function here called main. And then under here, we need to execute our function. Next, I want to say const app and main actually needs to be an async function. So let's say async main. Now app is going to equal await build server and build server comes from util slash server. Now we just need to start up our app. So I can say app.listen. Now I just want to listen on port 3000. And we can say console.log server is running. Now we see server is running here and we also get a log from our logger. Okay, so let's go set up another utility here. And the next utility that I want to set up is a logger. So inside of logger, I'm going to import Pino from Pino. And I just want to export a const called logger. And this is going to equal Pino. Now inside of here, I want to use Pino pretty. Now the Pino documentation does recommend not using Pino pretty in production, but it is really handy during development. So I'm going to say transport, and then the target is going to be Pino pretty. And the reason that we can do this is because you have Pino pretty installed as a dependency. Now let's save that and we can go back to our main and now we can use our logger. So I can say logger and make sure your logger comes from util slash logger.info. 
and I can say server is running at HTTP localhost port 3000. Now you can see that we get this nice log here. So let's go back into our server and we can use our logger here. So I can say logger and get that from our dot slash logger. Now I can remove that one there. And you can see that we get some nice logs here. Since we get this server is running at 127, let's actually remove our custom log here. So we just have one nice log. The next thing that I want to set up is graceful shutdowns. So what you can see here, when I save the server, it tries to start the application on port 3000, but we're already using port 3000. I wanna make sure that when we get a kill signal, we actually shut the application down and stop listening on that port. So let's create an async function called Graceful shutdown. And inside of graceful shutdown, we're going to take an object and we're going to take our app. Now we need to type our app here. So we're gonna say app and our app is just whatever build server returns. So let's say return type, type of build server. And you can see that app here is going to be the promise version, but we actually want the awaited version. So let's say awaited and awaited and return type are just utility functions that TypeScript comes with. Now we want to say await app.close and that's all we need to do in our graceful shutdown for now. Now we need to use our graceful shutdown. So I want to define a list of signals that I want to listen to. So I say const signals is equal to an array and I want to listen to sig int which is a signal interrupt. And I want to listen to sig term, which is a signal terminate. So what are these signals? So for example, when you press control C or command C, you're sending a sig int or a signal interrupt to your application. So if we press command C here, you can see that we've interrupted the application and it stops. Now we actually need to listen to these signals. So let's define a loop, say const signal of signals. Now I want to say process.on and we can listen to this signal. And we want to call a function and then we want to call graceful shutdown and we need to call graceful shutdown with our app. You can see that app.listen here actually returns a promise and so we should await that promise. When we get one of these signals, let's actually also log what signal we got. So we can say console.log got signal. Now let's run our application and we can press control C and you can see we got signal sig int. So signal interrupt and we're going to run our graceful shutdown function. Remove that console.log. So the next thing that I want to do is to set up some environment variables. So inside of source, I'm gonna create another folder and I'm gonna call this config. Inside of config, I'm going to create a file called env.ts. Inside of env.ts, I'm going to import zenv from zenv. Now zenv is just a little module that I created that allows you to get environment variables using a Zod configuration. Now this module isn't battle tested. And so if you would like to use something a little more battle tested, there's plenty of other options out there. But I have tested it and it does work quite well. So I'm gonna export a const env is equal to zenv. Now we can say dot env and we can set this to true. And this just means that we're going to get our environment variables from a dot env file. Now we can define a schema and our schema is just going to be a Zod schema. So we need to get Z from Zod and it's going to be an object. The first one I want to have is a port and this is going to be z.number. And I just want to default this to port 3000. Next, we can also define a host. And I want this to be z.string. defaults, And I want to default this to 0.0.0. We're also going to put a database URL in here, but I'm not going to put that in yet because we're not going to be able to start an application if we do. Okay, now we can use our environment variables. So inside of app.listen, I can call env. 
which comes from .config slash env dot port. And I can set my host to env dot host. Now we can run an application and you can see that we're now listening on our new host here. So that is our application bootstrapped. The next thing that we want to do is to set up Drizzle ORM and define our schemas. So the first thing to do is to sign up to Neon and create a new database. So I'm going to go to neon.tech. If you have a look in the description below, you'll see a link to Neon. It's not a referral link or anything. You don't really need a discount code because their free tier is so generous, but this just lets Neon know that you come to their website through my link and you've liked my video enough to sign up to their product, which really helps me out. So you can click sign in and then you can sign in with GitHub. Once you've authorized the application, you're going to see this screen here. Now I'm going to click this create a project button here and I'm going to name my project user API and I'm going to choose the region that's closest to me. So in my case, this is going to be Singapore. You can also select the Postgres version, but I want to use Postgres version 15. Then I'm going to create a project and this is surprisingly quick. If you've used any other database providers, you know that this is actually extremely fast. Now you're going to land on the direct connection, but we want the pooled connection here. So click this little copy button here and come back to your application and create a new file and call this file .env and paste in your database connection. Now I want to name this database connection is equal to, now we need to define our database connection inside of our env. So let's say database connection is going to be z.string. Now we can save. If you want to test that your database connection was actually added, you can come back to main.ts and you can say logger.debug. And I just want to log my whole env file. And I just want to say using env. Now we don't see this because our logger is set to info by default. So come back to our logger and I want to set the level here to debug. You can also set this as an environment variable too, if you like. Now you can see that we're using our database connection and this is our Postgres database here. And we have our port and host, of course. Now it is quite handy to log out the environment variables that you're using, but you also don't want to log a database connection string. So instead of our logger, we can put a array here to redact, and this is going to be all the fields that you would like to redact. So I just want to redact database connection. We can save that and you can see that we still get a log here, but it has been redacted. So that is a really handy feature of Pinot. Before we go any further, I just want to show you some really handy features inside of Neon that you might use if you need to debug your application. So first up is branches. Branches are extremely handy. You can have your main, which is going to be your production branch, and you can have your development branch. You can even have a branch for your local testing. Next is going to be tables, and we're going to use this screen here to verify that our database migrations have actually run. Next is going to be the SQL editor, and this is extremely handy to have a look at what data is in your database and do little modifications where needed. And the last handy feature is just seeing the operations that were performed on your database. So inside of source, I'm going to create a new folder here and I'm going to call this DB. Inside of DB, I'm going to create a new file and I'm just going to call this index.ts. And in index, I'm going to import pool from PG. PG is just Postgres. So wherever you see PG, it's referring to Postgres. I'm going to import drizzle from drizzle ORM slash node Postgres. And pool is a constructor here, so it needs a capital letter. Next, I want to say const pool is equal to new pool. We're going to have a connection string, and this is going to be env dot database connection. And we want SSL set to true. If you don't set SSL to true, you're going to get an error when you try to connect to your database. Okay, next I want to export const 
db is equal to drizzle and drizzle takes one argument and that's going to be our pool. Okay, so now that we have our database set up, we can go create our schemas. So drizzle is going to take these schemas and it's going to create some migrations for you. It's also going to run those migrations for you. We're going to do that towards the end of this section. And it's also going to give you some really handy TypeScript support inside of your application code. So inside of DB, I'm going to create a new file and I'll call this schema.ts. So the first schema that I want to create is going to be our application. So I'm going to export const application is equal to PG table. And for some reason, VS Code doesn't want to import that for me. So I'm going to import from drizzle rm slash pg core and we want to import pg table so pg table is going to take the name of our table so i'm going to call this applications and let's make our constant the same name the next argument is going to be an object so the first property that we want to define is an id and an id is going to be a uuid i just want to name it id it's also going to be our primary key and I want to default it to a random. So drizzle ORM is going to create an ID for us that is a UUID and it's going to be unique, of course, because this is a unique universal ID or universally unique ID, sorry. And it is going to be a primary key. Next, I want to name the application. So this is going to be a variable character or a varchar. We're going to call this name and its length is going to be 256. And I also want it to be not null. So you can't have an application that doesn't have a name defined. Next, I want created at. Created at is going to be a type stamp. Sorry, a timestamp. I want to name it created at. And I want to default to now. And it's also going to be not null. Our updated at is going to be the same. So I'm going to rename this to updated at, and I'm going to rename the name here to updated at. Okay, so this is our application schema ready to go. Let's create a migration for this schema. So to do that, we need to create a drizzle config file. So I'm going to create a new file here in the root directory for this drizzle.config.json. We're going to have an object in here and we're going to define an out directory. And this is just the directory that our migrations are going to be stored. So it's going to be dot slash migrations. Now I want to define a path to the schema. There's no dollar sign there. And this is going to be dot slash source slash db slash schema dot ts. And I also want to set breakpoints to false. So to generate these migrations, we need to run a, another script. So come back to package.json. Inside of our scripts, I want to create a new one called migrate. And this is going to run drizzle kit generate pg. Now let's try to run that. P npm migrate. And you can see that it created a migration with one table. Let's go have a look at this migration here. So this is just some SQL that says create the table applications if it does not exist and then create it with these fields here. Okay, so let's run this migration. So come back to main.ts. And at the top here, I'm going to import migrate from drizzle rm slash node postgres slash migrator. Now inside of our application, I need to run this migrator. So after we start listening, I want to say await migrate. Now we need to pass in our database and this comes from our DB and index file here. And I want to pass in an object and this is just going to point to our migrations. So I'm going to say migrations folder is going to be dot slash migrations and we can save that. Now let's try to run our application. So I can say pmpm dev. And our application started up. We got no errors in the console. So let's go back to Neon and have a look. 
So if we click on tables here, you can see that we now have one table, got applications that has an ID name, created at and updated at. So the next scheme that I want to create is our user schema. So I'm going to export a const called users is equal to a PG table. And we're going to name this users. We're going to have an object here. So the first property is going to be an ID. Again, we're going to have a UUID that is going to be named ID. And we want to default to random. And we also want it to be not null. So you might be wondering why our user's ID is not our primary key. And that is because we're going to have a composite primary key that consists of the user's email with their application. So let's define email, which is going to be a varchar called email. And its length is going to be 256 again. It's going to be not null. I'm going to copy that down because we're going to have a name, which is the same. Then we're going to have our application ID and our application ID is going to be a UUID. We're going to name it application ID. And then we're going to say it's references and references is a function. And it needs to resolve to applications.id. So the next field is going to be a password field and password is just going to be a varchar called password and its length is going to be 256 and again it is going to be not null we're going to have our created at and updated at. so I'm just going to copy these from applications because they're exactly the same now we need to define some indexes on our users here so the third argument so we have users the name we have our object and then our third argument here is going to be a function and our function needs to return an object. And inside of the function arguments here, we're going to get our users table. And the first property that I want to return in this argument is called CPK, which is going to be our composite primary key. So I want to say this is going to be a primary key, which is going to consist of users.email along with users.applicationID. And this means that a user's email doesn't necessarily have to be unique, but the combination of a user's email along with the user's application ID does have to be unique. The next thing that I want to do is to create an index on the ID. So I'm going to say ID index is going to be a unique index. And I want to name this users ID index dot on. And I want to put the index on users dot ID. The reason that I need to define this index here is because our ID is not a primary key and so it doesn't have a unique index on it and we need to use this in a join table later on. Okay, so let's run our migrator. So pmpm migrate. Now we have two tables here. Now we don't have to run these migrations yet. We can define our third table here and our third table is going to be our roles. So I want to export const roles is equal to pg table. We're going to call it roles. We're going to pass in an object and we can copy all of this stuff in our users table here. So I'm going to copy that and I'm actually just going to paste this in here. Now a role doesn't have an email. So let's delete that field here. It does have a name. It does have an application ID that references the application ID. We don't have a password. So let's delete that. It does have a created at and updated at, but we also have an array of permissions. So I'm going to say permissions, and this is going to be a text field. We're going to call it permissions, and we're going to say it's an array of dot type, and we can pass in a type here. So this is going to be an array and string. And then we just need to execute that. So our permissions are just going to be a hard coded array of text fields. And I'm going to create a constant file for this. So you notice that we don't have a table for permissions. The reason that we're going to do that is because if you create a table for permissions, you're going to start adding a lot of complexity to your application. 
So if you want to allow users just to create custom permissions, then you're going to have to have another set of endpoints to create permissions, to assign permissions to roles, and then you're going to have to query those permissions on your guards to do authentication checking. So you can do that if you like, or if your application requires that sort of logic, but I thought it's a little bit too much for one tutorial. So our roles here also need a composite primary key. So let's change users to roles. And we want to create a composite primary key in our roles.name along with the roles.application ID. So a role name doesn't necessarily have to be unique in the database, but a role name for a specific application does have to be unique. These two items together have to be unique. On their own, they don't necessarily have to be unique. So if you're wondering why an application ID on a role doesn't have to be unique, that's because an application can have many roles, but it cannot have many roles of the same name. For our ID index here, I just want to change this to roles, ID index and roles.id. So let's run our migrator again. You can see now that we have three tables. Let's start up our application and get these tables into Neon. So once the application starts, we can flick over to Neon and we can refresh our tables page here. And now we can see three tables. Just a note, if you haven't run your migrations yet, I do suggest that you pause the video and go run those migrations. You can get into some weird territory with your indexes here and a next table that we're going to create. So this table is going to be a join table between our roles, our users, and an application. So we're going to use this table to assign a role to a user inside of an application. So we're going to export const users to roles. And this is going to equal a PG table users to roles. Now, if your application wasn't multi-tenanted, then this join table here would just be between users and roles because a user can have many roles and a role can be assigned to many users. This means that we have a many-to-many -many relationship between users and roles. However, we are making a multi-tenanted application and the parent object that we're using is called application. So I'm gonna say application ID is going to be a UUID we're going to call this application ID. It's going to reference applications.id and it's also going to be not null. Okay, we need to do this two more times, one for roles and one for users. So we're gonna say role ID is going to be a UID called role ID dot references roles.id and of course it's going to be not null. Now let's do this for user ID. This is going to be a UUID called user it's going to reference our users.id And then finally, it's going to be not null. So these three properties here don't have to be unique on their own, but together they do have to be unique. And remember to do this, we need to create a composite primary key. So let's add a callback function here. I'm going to name this property users to roles. We're going to return an object. This object is going to be our CPK or composite primary key. We're going to call this primary key and it's going to have three properties in here. It's going to have a users to roles dot application ID, a users to role dot role ID, and a users to roles dot user ID. Okay, so let's go run pmpm migrate. And you can see here we're creating four tables now. Let's have a look at our latest migration. The reason I said to run your migrations before is because you can see here that we're creating a reference to our application's ID. We're doing that for roles and for users. So if we come back one, you can see here, we're going to create this unique index for roles. If we ran all these migrations together, this unique index here may get added after we create this relationship here. And when we try to run that migration, it's not going to work. 
So let's try run this with pmpm dev. And once our application started up, we can flick back to Neon and check that our table is there. So you can see now that we have all of the tables required to get started writing our application code. In this section, we're going to create our application module. And in that module, we're going to be able to register an application and list out our applications. So inside of our source directory here, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this modules. Inside of modules, for now, we're going to need two modules. The first one is going to be our applications. And then we're also going to need one for roles. I'm going to create a folder for roles. Inside of applications, we're going to need a few files. The first file is going to be applications.routes.ts. I'm going to stick with the plural. So applications.routes.ts, applications.controllers.ts. And our controllers are just going to be our handlers that have some business logic in them. Next, I'm going to create a new file called applications.services.ts. And remember, our services are what we use to communicate with our database. Finally, I'm going to create our applications.schemas.ts. Okay, so the first file that I want to work in is our applications.routes. So I'm going to export an async function called application routes. This is going to get one argument. This is going to be our app, and this is going to be a Fastify instance. So we can import the type for that. Now we're going to have two routes in here. The first one is going to be to create an application. So we're going to say app.post, and the route for this is just going to be a backslash. We're going to prefix this with slash API slash applications later on. Then we're going to have an object here and we don't have a handler. So the next thing we can do is app.get and then we're also going to have a slash here and then we're also going to have a handler. For now, let's just put a function in here that just returns void. So we can do that for both of these. The next thing we want to do is come back into our server and here where we said we're going to register our routes, we're going to say app.register and I want to register my application routes with a prefix of slash API slash applications. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is work from the bottom up. So I'm gonna work from my services. So we need two services here, one to create an application and one to list out applications. So I'm gonna export an async function, create application. And this is just going to take one property and that is going to be our data. Next, we can say const result is equal to await db.insert and db comes from our database file here that we created earlier. We want to insert into applications and then we want to define some values. So our values is just going to be data. Then we can call dot returning, execute that. Then we're going to return our results. And if we have a look at result, you can see that it's going to return an array but we're only inserting one item. So we just want to return the zeroth element from that array. Now you can see TypeScript is complaining for data. So we can infer the value of this data here. So we can say infer model and infer model comes from drizzle ROM. Now this takes a generic. So we're gonna say type of applications. Now we're gonna have two options here, one for insert and select, and we're inserting. So I'm going to select that. Now, if we hover over data, you can see that we get a name. That's a required string. Then we get ID, created at, and updated at. The next function that we want to define is to get our applications. So we're going to export an async function, get applications. And say const results is equal to await db dot select. We're just going to select all for now dot from, and I want to select from applications. So this query here is essentially select star from applications. But what we really want is select ID name and created at from applications. So to do that inside of select here, we can say, I want to get my ID field and this is going to be applications.id. I want to get a name field. This is going to be applications.name. 
and I want to get created at, and this is going to be applications.createdApp. And then finally, we just need to return our result. Okay, so let's go into our controller now and we can create our handlers. So an export an async function, create application handler. This is going to take two arguments here. The first one is going to be our request and then our reply. The reply is just the same as if you're used to using express, it's going to be your response. This we can type as fastify request and we can also type a reply with fastify reply. Now fastify request is a generic and if we open up that generic, you can see that it takes a body. So we can type that body as any for now. And if we go into our schemas, we can create a schema to type that body. And I'm gonna use Zod to create my schemas, but Fastify takes JSON schemas. So we're gonna to have to convert our Zod schemas to JSON schema. So I'm gonna say const create application body schema is equal to Z dot object. Now we're just gonna have one property here and that's going to be name, which is going to be a string. So Z dot string. We can also add an error here, required error, and we can say name is required. Now we can export const create application JSON schema is equal to an object. So this object is going to be our JSON schema and we only want to define the body. So I'm gonna say body. Now we need to cast our Zod object here to JSON schema. And we have a function to do that called Zod to JSON schema, which we need to import. So imports Zod to JSON schema from Zod to JSON schema. Now this takes two arguments. The first argument is our Zod schema. And then the second argument is just a name. I also want to create a TypeScript type that we can use to type our request body. So I'm going to export a type, create application body, and this is going to be z.infer. And infer is a generic that takes type of create application body schema. Now if we hover over that, you can see that we have one property and that's going to be our name. Now if we come back to our controller, we can use this type here. So I'm going to type our body as create application body. Now if we say const is equal to request.body, we should be able to pick our name out here. Next thing we need to do is to create an application. So I'm gonna say const application is equal to await create application. And this is going to come from our service. Let's give this a name. Now I just want to return our application. Okay, so let's go tell our route about this handler here. So if we come back into our routes, we can say this is going to be our create application handler. We also have a schema that we can use. So I'm gonna say schema, and this is going to be create application JSON schema. Now, if we go into Thunder Client here, we have our create application request. I can send this off. And you can see that we get our application one here and it creates an ID, created it and updated it for us. Let's try to create this without a name. And let's say we want to call this name two instead. We can send this and we get an error and it says body must have required property name, which is exactly what we expect. So when we create an application, we also want to create some default roles. So I want to create a default role for a super admin user. And I also want to create a default role for just a regular user. So I'm going to define these roles and permissions inside a file inside of config called permissions.ts. So I'm going to export a const, and this is going to be called all permissions is equal to an array. Now this is just going to be an array of every single possible permission inside of our application. 
So a convention to use here is the name of your resource followed by the action that the user can perform on that resource. So let's say we have a blog and in that blog we have posts. Then we can say that the user can perform an action on the post resource. And then the action that they can perform is a write action. So they can create a post. We can also have a post read and users with this permission can read posts. Let's comment this for posts. Now we can also have some permissions for users. So I can say users. Now I want to say users roles add. So this is the one permission that we're actually going to be using throughout this video. So this means that we can add a role to a user. So in this case, we have two resources that we're working with. We have our users and we have our roles and then add is the action that they can perform on that. In fact, the better action that they can perform on this is write. So essentially they can write a role to a user. You can also add a comment here for ads allowed to add a role to a user. The inverse of that would be users, roles, and then delete. And then allowed to remove a role from a user. We're only going to be implementing a guard for this user role right here. So where users can give roles to other users. Essentially, you only want your super admin to be able to do this or anyone with admin privileges. Okay, we have an array here, but I also want an object of these permissions. So we can do that with reduce. So I can export a constant called permissions. And this is going to be equal to all permissions dot reduce. Reduce takes a callback and the second parameter is an object. The first argument of the callback is going to be our accumulator. So the work that we've done so far, and this is the result of that work. And then the second argument is our current item that we're working with. In our case, it's going to be a permission. So the first thing to do inside of reduce is always just return your accumulator. If you forget to return your accumulator, your reduce function isn't going to work. Okay, so now we need to say our accumulator permission is equal to permission. So this needs to be permission, not permissions. So essentially what we're doing here is we're getting this value here, user roles right. And we're saying const obj is equal to an object where user right role is the key. And then the value is just that same string. So TypeScript is complaining because permissions here is just an empty object. But I want to use this sort of like an enum. So I can say as, and this is going to be a record. Now the key of our record is just going to be an item from all permissions here. So I'm gonna open up some brackets. I'm gonna say type of all permissions, and then number just means any item from that list. Now the value is just going to be the exact same thing. So let's hover over this now, and you can see we have a record of string string, but still this isn't what we want. We want this to be the keys inside of this array here. But TypeScript doesn't know that we're not going to add items to this array. So we need to typecast this as as const, which means that this list here is read only, and then TypeScript knows that we're not going to add or remove items, and so we're going to get some better typing here. We can see this in action. So if we wanted to find a user role, so this is just going to be the role that every user that registers gets. So you can say export const user role is equal to an array. So permissions set for a role is just an array of those permissions. And let's say we want to add our post write and post read. So I'm going to say permissions dot post write and permissions dot post read. So you can see this is an array with these string literals inside of it. The last constant that I want to define inside of our permissions here is going to be our system roles. So I'm going to export const system roles is equal to an object. We're going to have our super admin, and then this is just going to be equal to the key, so super admin. 
And then we're going to just have our application user. And again, this is just going to be equal to application user. And I think I need to spell this correctly there. Okay, now let's go use these permissions and roles when we create our application. So we need a way to create a role and this is where our roles module comes into play. So inside of this roles folder here, I'm gonna create a new folder. I'm gonna call this roles.services.ts. Inside of here, I'm going to export an async function, create role. This is just going to take one property and that's going to be an argument. Now let's say const result is equal to await db dot insert. We want to insert into roles. The values is just going to be data dot returning. Then we can return results. And again, we just want the zeroth element. We can type our data here with infer model again. So infer model. Infer model is a generic, so type of roles. And then we can select from insert or select. So now we can use this create role service inside of our application controller. So I'm going to say const super admin role is equal to await create role. Our application is just going to be the application that we just created dot ID. The name is going to be our system roles dot application dot super user our permissions is going to be all permissions so this user has the keys to the kingdom you can see the typescript doesn't like this and this is because permissions is just an array of strings but all permissions here is a read-only array of strings so we can cast this to as unknown and then as array of string and TypeScript is going to be happy. Now let's create our application user. So const application, application user role is equal to await create role. The application ID is going to be our application dots ID. The name is going to be system roles dot application user and then our permissions is just going to be user role in fact let's rename user role here to user role permissions and let's import that correctly remove this import now let's return our super admin role and our application user role And we can go back to Thunder Client here and we can try create our application two. And you can see that we get a super admin role and we also get an application user role. One little optimization that you could do here is you could say remove the awaits here. We can call this a promise. Now we can say const array is equal to await promise dot all settled and we can pass it an array the first element in the array is going to be our promise to create the super admin role and then the second one is going to be our promise to create the application user now here we can grab these out so i want to call this one application user role and then i want to call the second one application sorry this is going to be super admin role then we're going to have application user role and if we go try this again it's going to give us a bit of a funny result you can see here that it gets status fulfilled and our value now you could leave that if you like but a better way of doing this i think would be to say super admin role dot value and we could do the same with application user role dot value now TypeScript is complaining because the status could be rejected and therefore value won't exist. So we'd need to do a check here. If super admin role dot status is equal to 
rejected, then we want to throw a new error. Error creating super admin role. Then we want to do the same thing for our application user role here as well. So when we go to create an application here, it should be just a smidgens faster. The other thing that I want to show you before we move on is if we come back to the application routes and we remove async here. So let's say we forgot to add this and then we save our code here. So you can see that Fastify doesn't like this. It says plugin did not start in time. You may have forgot to call done. In fact, we didn't forget to call done. You can either say this is done here and then you can call done at the end down here, but we're using async code. So we need to make this an async function. If you run into that error, you know you need to make your routes an async function or any plugin that you're using. Okay, so the next thing to do is to list out our applications. So inside of our applications controller, I'm going to create another handler here. So export async function, create get applications handler. And I'm simply going to return get applications. Now let's go hook this up to our route. So we're not going to have a schema in here. This is going to be get applications handler. And we can go try this out with this get applications request here. And you can send that off and you can see that we get all of these applications back here. In this section, we're going to create our user module and inside of that module, we're going to be able to register a user. Now, the interesting thing about registering a user is we need a way to register an initial user that's going to get a super admin role. So let's start by creating the module. Inside of your modules folder, let's create a folder and we'll call this users. Inside of users, we need to create our controllers, routes, services, and schemas. So I'm going to create users.controllers.ts, users.services.ts, users.schemas.ts, and users.routes.ts. Okay, so let's start by creating our service. So I'm going to come into users.service and I want to have a service for creating a user. So I'm going to export an async function called create user. Now we're going to have data here. And again, we can type this by saying infer model type of users. Users comes from our DB folder. And then we want our insert. Let's say const results is equal to await db.insert. I want to insert into users. I want to insert my values. I'm just going to spread my data here because we need to hash our password, but we can do that later on. Dot returning. Now I don't want to return all fields. I just want to return my ID, email, name, and application ID, because I don't want to return the password, for example. So I'm going to say ID, this is going to be users.id, email, this is going to users.email, name, users.name, and application ID is going to be applications, ID. Again, we need to return our result, and our result is going to be an array. So we just need to return the zeroth element here. So this service is also going to be responsible for hashing our password. So I'm going to say const hashed password is equal to await argon2. We need to import argon2. Imports argon2 from argon2 dot hash and then we need to pass in our data dot password okay so under where we spread our data we need to say password 
and this is going to equal our hashed password. Now, if I did this above our data, we're going to put in our password, then we're going to spread our data here that also includes a password and we're going to overwrite this string. So we need to make sure we put it under where we spread our data. So the next thing I want to do is to define my schema. So I'm gonna come into users.schema. So I'm gonna say const create user body schema is equal to Z, which comes from zod.object. In here, we're gonna have an email. This is going to be z.string dot email. So Zod is going to enforce that this is in fact an email. We're going to have a name, which is going to be z.string. We're going to have an application ID. Pretty much everything that we create, we're going to require an application ID. That's because all of our resources are going to be linked back to an application. This is going to be a z.string. We can also make application ID a UUID. So we can say z.string.uuid. And then this is going to enforce that the application ID is a UUID before the request gets to the controller. We're going to have password. This is going to be z.string. Now inside of Zod, we can also say that this needs to be a minimum of six. I'm going to say min and six. Now we also need to define a Boolean for whether this is the initial user. So I'm going to say initial user z dot boolean and this is just going to be optional so we'll only pass this in during say a wizard when we're setting up an application okay so let's export the type as well so export type create user body is equal to z dot infer type of create user body schema now we also need to export our JSON schema. So I'm gonna say export const create user JSON schema is equal to an object. Again, we're only gonna have one property in here and we're gonna have body. And this is going to be Zod to JSON schema. I'm gonna pass in the schema as this first argument and then just the schema name as the second argument. If we were to have other properties inside of the request, so let's say we have a query string, we can define that here as well. So I can say query string, and then this would need to be JSON schema. We can also have URL params, and we can do that with params. And again, this would need to be JSON schema. So you could define a Zod schema, and then you could cast it to a JSON schema. So let's go over to our controller here, and we can create our handler. So export function create user handler. And we can have our request and our response. Our request is going to be a fastify request. Our response is going to be, actually, let's call this reply. This is going to be fastify reply. Now we can also type out our request body as well. So I'm going to say body. This is going to be create user schema let's check that that's correct let's make this create user body and we can remove the word schema there so that i think that's a little bit more consistent create to user body okay so the first thing i want to do is to get the initial boolean out so let's say const is equal to request dot body and out of here i want to get the initial user and then i just want to get the rest of the user data so i'm going to call this data and then we need to determine which role we're going to assign to this user. So I say const role name is equal to, if we have the initial user, then we're going to get system roles dot super admin. Otherwise, we're going to get system roles dot application user. Now you may be wondering, hey, can anyone just pass in this initial user and gain super admin access? Well, that's not going to be the case because we're going to check that this application doesn't have any other super admins or this user is the first user registering. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is to get the role by name. So I can say const role is equal to, and we don't have a service for this. So let's go into our roles service, export async function, get role by name. Now this is going to take two arguments. One is going to be a name and one is going to be an application ID. 
let's type these out. Name is going to be a string and application ID is also going to be a string. So I'm going to say const results is equal to await db.select and we can just select everything from roles dot where and then we can limit this to just one so limit one so when we're scanning the database we're going to find one role and then we're just going to return it and we're going to finish off the scan okay so let's return results zero now let's fill in our where clause here so in normal sql you would say select all from roles where now in this where clause we want to say where the name is equal to our name here so this would be parameter one and application id is equal to our parameter two so how do you do this with drizzle orm so you have a few utility functions here. The first one we want is this and, which may seem a little bit counterintuitive because this actually goes in the middle, but we're going to put this at the start. So we're gonna say and, and this comes from Drizzle ORM. Now inside of and, we're going to have two functions. So the first one is going to be EQ. Now we wanna say roles.name, and this needs to be equal to the name that we passed in. Let me put this down on new lines to make it a little bit more readable. Now the second equals that we're going to have is of course this application ID here. So we can copy this and we can say roles.applicationID is going to be equal to our application ID. So I'm gonna paste this query up the top here just so you can have a reference back to what this actually means. And maybe I'll put this down here. Okay, so we can go back to our controller and we can start using this. So get role by name. Now we need to pass in the name, which is going to be our role name. And then the application ID is going to be our data dot application ID. So if this request has initial user set to true, we need to check that this user does in fact have the permission to assume the super admin role. So there's a couple of different ways that we could do this. And the way that I'm going to do it is I'm just going to get all of the users for this application. And I'm just going to check that there's none registered. Another way that you could do it is you could get the super admin role and then you could check that there's no users inside of this application that already have that role. So we need another service here. So I'm gonna come into user services and I'm going to export an async function. And this function is going to return all of the users for an application. So it's going to be called get users by application. Now it's going to take one argument and that's going to be the application ID. And of course that's going to be a string. And I want to say const result is equal to await db dot select dot from users dot where. So we just want to compare on one field here. So we don't need our and function. We can just say eq users dot application id is going to be equal to our application id. Now this is going to return an array and we do want to return the full array. So I'm going to return results. So we could optimize this query here a little bit for our use case by only selecting the ID from the user and putting in a limit. So you could put the limit in as one and then if it returns one result, then we know that this user cannot assume the initial user role. Sorry, this user cannot assume the super admin role. Okay, so now let's do our check. Let's say if role name is equal to System roles dot super admin. We're going to say const app users is equal to await get users by application. We're going to pass in our application ID, which actually comes from data. So data dot application ID. And our handler here needs to be an async function. And we actually need to await get role by name as well. Now we need to say if users.length 
is greater than zero. So we already have users registered for this application and they're trying to assume the super admin role. Then we want to return a reply dot code. And I just want to return a 400 dot send and we can send a message of application already has super admin user. And we can also attach some extensions here as well. So I'm gonna say extensions code. And I'm just gonna put the code in as application already super user. These codes are really handy if you're building a service around this application. So you can take this code and then interpret it into a user-friendly message. I'm also gonna put the application ID as data.applicationID. Let's move this role down because we've done this check and we haven't used it yet. We can also check if not role, then I want to send another message. So I'm going to return reply.code And the code is just going to be another 400 or say 404 because it's not found dot send. And the message is just going to be role not found. So we should never see this message here because these roles that we're checking here are created when we create the application. If we do get this message here, then we've done something wrong when creating the application. So now we need to create the user and then we need to assign the role that we've decided here to that user. So let's say try, and I'm gonna catch an error here. So I'm gonna say const user is equal to await create user. And we created our create user service before. We're just gonna pass data in here. And then we just want to return our user. But we also need to assign a role to the user. So to do this, we need another service. So come into our user services. And I wanna say export async function, assign role to user. This is going to take a user ID. If we go back to our schemas, we can see db schemas. Essentially, we're going to create a record inside of this table here, which means we need to have our application ID, our role ID, and our user ID. So we have our user ID, application ID, and role ID. These are all going to be strings. So user ID is a string, application ID is a string, role ID is also a string. Now this is just going to be a simple insert. So I'm gonna say const result is equal to await db dot insert user to roles dot values. In fact, we don't need to do any of this. Let's remove all this and let's just say data and we can infer model type of user to roles and we want the insert. Now inside of values, we can just pass in the data Then we can return our results and our zeroth element. And we also need to call returning here. Okay, so let's go back to our user controller. And here we don't need to get a value. We can just say await assign role to user. Now our user ID is going to be our user dot ID. So this is the user that we just created. Our role ID is going to be our role that we found up the top here, dot ID. And then our application ID is going to be data dot application ID. And this is going to be role ID. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to come into our user routes and we need to define our user routes. So I'm gonna export an async function users routes. This is going to take our app this is going to be a fastify instance. 
then we can say app.post. Again, this is going to post to the index route. We're going to have a scheme here. We've already defined that. And then our handler is going to be create user handler. So our schema is going to be create user JSON schema. Okay, so let's go back to our server here in utils. And I want to register my user route. So app.register users routes. Then I want to have a prefix of slash API slash users. Open up the terminal and make sure the application is running. And we can come over to Thunder Client. And now we have this request here to create a user. So the email is just going to be test at example.com. We're going to have a password, which is six characters, a name and an application ID. So to get the application ID, you need to go to the get applications and we can send this off. Now let's just grab one of these application IDs here come back to the create user request and we can paste this in. Now let's send this. And you can see that we get our user back, but we didn't say that this is the initial user. Let's create another user. So test two. And let's say the initial user is true. Send this. So we get an error here. Application already has super admin user. This is not what we expect because we sent the first request with initial user set to false. So let's go back and get another application. And we can copy this here and paste this in to this one. And let's try this with initial user set to false. And then we can come back to our user controller. And let's just do some console logging. So I'm going to console.log initial user. I'm going to console.log my role name. And then I'm also going to console.log my role. Let's comment this out here so we don't actually create the user so we can keep doing it over and over again. And we can send this. So initial user is undefined, so it's false. This is application user, and our role is going to be an application user. So the issue that we faced before is not actually a bug in our service. It's actually a bug in the way that I created the initial user. So when we create our first user, we should set initial user to true. Otherwise, we'll never be able to create an initial user with this setup because we're checking here that app user's length is zero, not that we already have an initial user. Okay, so that's fine. I'm going to leave that logic in there for now. So let's create this user for this different application. So let's say initial user is true. We can send this. Now let's go over to Neon and have a look at the data that we have in our database. So I can go into my projects, user API. Let's go into tables. Let's have a look at our users. And you can see here that we get this nice preview of the data that's actually in our users table. You can see that we've hashed the password correctly. And all of these values look good. You can see that email is not unique, but it is unique amongst applications. These application IDs here are unique. Let's have a look at users to roles. So we have two different users and these two different users have different roles and they're assigned to different applications. So this is all looking good. In this next section, we're going to be able to log in and this login isn't going to be anything special. It's just a way that we can verify that we have a user and then we can enforce our guards down here. So the first thing that I want to do is come into controllers and I want to export another controller here. So export async function login handle. This is going to take a request. It's going to be a fastify request and a reply, which is going to be a fastify reply. Let's also create our schema. I think we should probably start creating our schemas first off. So let's actually comment these. This is create user. This is going to be login. So we're going to say const login schema is equal to z dot object. We're going to have an email, which is going to be z dot string dot email 
we're going to have a password, which is going to be z.string. You could put them in here for password, but we know that if they put in a password that's less than six characters, it's going to be wrong and our application is going to tell them so. Remember, all requests are going to have to include an application ID. So this is going to be z.string. And we can export a type as well. So export type login body is going to be z.infer. Type of login schema. We also need our JSON schema. So export const login JSON. So this is going to be login body JSON schema is going to be an object. We're going to have our body. This is going to be Zod to JSON. I'm going to pass in my login schema and then just a string as well. Okay, so now we can type our request here. So we're going to have body. This is going to be login body. And we can say const is equal to request.body. And in here we can get our application ID, our email, and our password. Okay, I need to create a service to get a user by their email address. So let's export async function, get user by email. So we can type this out, so email, and we also need our application ID. Email is going to be a string. And then application ID is also going to be a string. So const result is equal to await db.select. Now I'm not going to put anything in select for now. From users. And this query is actually going to get quite complicated. But I'm going to start off very simple for now dot where and we need to use our and clause at the end so let's say and now we have two things that we want to match on our email and our application id so where eq uses dot email is equal to our email and eq uses dot application ID is equal to our application ID. So I want to say if not results dot length. So if we didn't find a user, let's return null. Okay, so for now, I just want to return the result. I want to say const user is equal to get user by email. I want to pass in my application ID and I also want to pass in my email. I'll say if not user, then we can throw a new error. Actually, we don't want to throw an error. We just want to return a reply with a code of 400.send. And my message is just going to be invalid email or password. Okay, so I want to sign a token here for the user. So I can say const token is equal to JWT. We need to import JWT from JSON web token. So import JWT from JSON web token. Dot sign. I'm going to pass it an object. And I'm just going to sign this with a string that just says secret. I'm also going to put a comment here. Change this secret or signing method or get fired. So ideally the signing method would be RS256, which means that you would use a public and private key, but I'm not gonna do that in this tutorial because that's just gonna take a little bit longer. Okay, so once we've got a token, I just want to return my token as the result. Okay, so what can we put in this token? Well, we can put an ID, our user's ID, we want to put our application ID. We can put that in. And we can probably put in our email if we like. But we also want to put in a list of all the permissions that this user has. So to do this, we're going to have to join our roles onto our get users by email. So the first join that I want to do is going to be a left join, 
where I join on users to roles. And I wanna join it on where the user ID is equal to our user ID from here. And our application ID is equal to our application ID from here. So let's say dot left join. The table that I want to join on is users to roles. And the condition that I wanna join on is and we're gonna have two properties, eq users to roles dot user ID is equal to our users dot ID and eq users to roles dot application ID is going to be equal to our users dot application ID. So the SQL for this is going to be left join from, let's comment this. So, so left join from users to roles on user to joins dot user ID is equal to our users dot ID and users to roles dot application ID is equal to users dot application ID. Let's move this down to this join here. So essentially what we're doing is we're doing another query here for the users to roles table. And then we're going to find the element where the application ID is equal to our application ID from the result of this section of the query and our user ID is also equal. Okay, so we have the results from users to roles, but if we go back to Neon and we have a look at our users to roles tables, we're just going to get these results here. But actually what we want is our roles results here. And we wanna get this full role because what we really want is this list of permissions. So let's go do another join. So down here under this join, I'm gonna say left join on roles and I want to join on where eq roles dot id is equal to users to roles dot role id. So the SQL for this would be left join from roles on roles dot id is equal to our users to roles dot role ID. Okay, so this is going to return multiple results because for every role that the user has, we're going to get a result. So let's go back to our controller and let's just return the result for this. So once we get our user, let's just return user so we can have a look at what this is returning. So we can come back to Thunder Client and we can go to login and we need to get an application that we can log into. So we're just gonna get this last one here. I know I created a user for that. So let's paste this into application ID. And our login route isn't hooked up. So let's go hook that up first. So I'm gonna come back into user routes. I'm gonna say app.post slash login. We're gonna have a schema. This is going to be login body JSON schema. And this is not named correctly, actually. This is login JSON schema, not login body. It does include the body, but it could include other properties as well. So let's name this properly login JSON schema. And our handler is going to be login handler. Okay, so now let's go try login again with Thunder Client. And let's have a look at what we return. So we returned an array, which is interesting. And each element in the array is going to be this user. Now we're going to have our users to roles here. And we're also going to have our roles. Now, if a user had multiple roles, in this case, we don't. We only have one role for this user. Then we would have multiple elements to this array. So we need to write a function to condense them all into one and just tell us all of the permissions that that user has. So let's go write some fancy reduce code inside of our get user by email to make this data structure a little bit more readable. So I wanna say const user is equal to results.reduce. I'm going to have the accumulator and the current value. And we're also going to return an object. 
Okay, so down the bottom, I just first up want to return my accumulator. I always do that first because otherwise I forget. So I want to do a check to see if the accumulator includes the ID. So I'm going to say, if not accumulator.id, so this ID is going to be the user's ID, then I want to return our current and our permissions is going to be a new set of current dot permissions. Okay, so I've committed a great sin here, and this is using the spread operator inside of reduce. This is a big no-no, and in fact, creating a new set inside of reduce is a big no-no as well, because for every iteration of this, it could create a new object. Really, what you want to do is to mutate the object. But in this case, it's not so bad because we're only ever going to do this once. Once we have this ID, then we're going to skip down to this code and we're going to skip this entire block. So this is not so bad. Let's actually type out our result here so we don't get these errors and we get a little bit of typing as we fill in our reduce function. So I'm going to say as omit. So there's a property that I want to omit. I want to say type of results. And I want to get number, so just any item from that result. Then the property that I want to omit is going to be permissions. And my permissions now is just going to be a set of strings. So TypeScript is still complaining here because we have our users which is going to be ID, name, but we don't actually want all this stuff. We don't want these roles here. We don't want users roles. We actually just want to select from the user table. So inside of select, we're going to create an object that we want. So I'm going to say ID, and this is going to be users.id. We also want an email. This is going to be users.email, a name. This is going to be users.name, the application ID, is going to come from users.applicationID. The role ID, this is come, come from roles.id. The password, we need that password because we're going to do a check on that. Users.password. Now I just want the permissions from roles.permissions. And before we go any further, let's do our login again and see what this payload now looks like. Let's send this and you can see that we get an array here with a nice neat object. So for every role that the user has, we're going to have an object like this inside of the array. And now what we're doing is condensing those and merging these permissions into a set. Okay, so TypeScript isn't complaining anymore. If we hover over current, you can see that this is what we selected. So I want to say if not current.permissions, then I just want to return the accumulator. If we don't have any permissions, we don't need to append any onto the set. Otherwise, we need to loop through the permissions and then append those to our new set here. So I'm say for const permission of permissions, the accumulator dot permissions dot add, because our permissions here is a set of strings and we just want to add the permission. And this is current.permissions. And then we're returning our accumulator. So down here, let's return our user. And let's say our permissions now is going to be an array. Actually, I can just return the user and then we can go log in and I'll show you what it's going to do. So we can send this. So you can see here our permissions is an object because set is an object and it's empty. This is not what we want. We want an array of strings. So let's go back to our get user by email. Now I want to say permissions is going to be array dot from user dot permissions. So essentially what we've done is we've got all the permissions from all that user's roles and then just merge them into one set and then we'll create an array from that set. So there's no risk of having a duplicate permission inside of the user's permissions.
So you can see now we have a nice neat array of permissions. So let's go back to our controller and we can now use this user here. And we need to await this. And we can remove this return. Now in our token, I want to say scopes. And this is going to be equal to user.permissions. And let's also include the ID. So this is going to be user.id. Okay, so now let's go log in again. We can send this, we get our token back and we can go check the payload of this token. So I'm gonna come over to jwt.io and we can paste in our token here and you can see that we get our scopes and this is going to be our array of strings. We have our ID, our email and application ID. In this section, we're going to create a role and we're also going to assign that role to a user. Now this is going to be highly insecure until we do the next part, which is going to be check the user permissions with a guard. So come into the role module and we need to create our role.routes.ts, our role.controllers.ts, and our role.schemas, so role.schemas.ts. So let's start off with our schemas. So I'm going to say const create role body schema is equal to z.object. We're going to have a name for our role, which is going to be a z.string. We're going to have the permissions that this role is going to have. And this is going to be z.array. And it's going to be an enum because we only want to allow permissions that we've defined in our all permissions array. So I'm going to say z.enum, all permissions. And we also need to include our application ID, which is going to be z.string. And we can say that this is going to be a UUID. So let's export the type. So export type create role body. It's going to be z.infer. We're going to infer the type of create role body schema. This needs to be type of. So now let's export the JSON schema. So export const create role JSON schema. It's going to be an object. We're going to have body zod to JSON schema. I'm going to pass in a JSON schema here. Okay, so let's go define our handler. So export async function create role handler. We're going to have our request and our reply. We can type our request as fastify request. We're going to get our body here. So this is going to be body, which is create role body. And our reply is going to be a fastify reply. So I want to pick out or destructure our request dot body and from our body I want to get the name the permissions and the application ID now I just need to say const role is equal to await create role we're gonna have our name our permissions and our application ID then finally, let's just return our role. Okay, so the next thing to do is to define our route. So I'm gonna say export async function role routes. We're going to get our app. It's going to be fastify instance. Say app.post, and we're just gonna to post to the index. We do have a schema to use. So this is going to be create role JSON schema. Then our handler is just going to be create role handler. And let's go into our server.ts and we can say app.register role routes. And we want to prefix this with slash API slash roles. Okay, so let's go into Thunder Client. 
And we can say inside of our user API here, we have a request to create a role. You can see here that we have an application ID as a environment variable. If you come into env here and click on local, you can replace this application ID or create this environment variable with an application that exists in your database. So we can use our get applications request here. We can grab one of these application IDs and then we can come into env and we can create this application ID environment variable. Make sure there's no quotes and no spaces at the start. We can save that. Now let's go into our collection, create role. And you can see that we're getting this error here. Body permissions zero must be equal to one of the allowed values. That's because these permissions that I've put in here don't exist in our permissions constants. So let's go up to config and permissions. And the good thing about Thunder Client is you can split your window here. So I can close my bar there and then I can drag. So let's create some new permissions here. So I'm going to say post delete and post edit own. And let's call this role here. This is going to be post moderator. Let's grab these two permissions, paste them in. And we need to restart our application. So save your permissions file, send this. And now we created our new role here. So one issue with this is that we've created this role here, but we're not even logged in. We haven't assigned an authentication token to this request. So let's go add the ability to assign a role to a user, and then we can go add our guards. So I want to come into our users controller, and then I want to create a handler in here. So export async function, assign role to user handler. This is going to be a request, fastify request, and our reply is going to be a fastify reply. And we should create a schema for this as well. So add a comment, assign role to user, export const, actually we don't need to export this. This is going to be the Zod schema. So const add, Assign role to user body is equal to a Z dot object. We're going to have our user ID, the user that we want to assign the role to is going to be Z dot string. And this is going to be a UUID. We have our role ID, going to Z dot string dot UUID. Then of course we have our application ID. It's going to be z dot string, and this is going to be a UUID as well. Then we need to export our JSON schema. So export const assign role to user JSON schema is equal to an object, the body is going to be Zod to JSON schema. I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to put it in as the name as well. And let's create a type as well. So export type assign role to user body is going to be Z.infer type of assign role to user body. So we can come back to our controller and now we can type out body. So body is going to be assign role to user body. So this handle is going to be quite simple. We're just going to deconstruct the request dot body. I'm going to get the user ID, the role ID and the application ID. I say const result is equal to await assign role to user. We've already created this service. Now we need to pass in our user ID, application ID, and our role ID. And then we can just return our result. And these requests here, you probably should be wrapping in a try catch. 
So let's wrap this. If we get an error, we can log this error, logger dot error. We can pass in our error there, say error assigning role to user. And we can also return reply.code 400.send. The message can be e.message. Actually, let's not do e.message. Let's just say could not assign role to user. Okay, so we need to hook this up to our routes. So inside of user routes, we can say app.post. slash roles we're going to have a schema which is going to be assign role to user json schema then we're going to have a handler of assign role to user handler okay so let's try this out so i'm going to come into thunder client here let's get our applications So I'm just going to grab this application here. Actually, I'm going to grab this bottom one. We know we have users for this. So application three, I'm going to put this into our environment variable. So application. Now let's go back to Neon and we need to find a user that exists in this application. Okay, so we don't have a user for that application, but we do have two users. So let's just grab this application ID here. And we'll put that in. Now let's also grab the user ID. So I'm just going to grab the ID for this user. And I want to change this to role ID. Now let's go grab a role for this application. In fact, let's go create a role for this application. So I'm going to come back to our collection. I'm going to create a role. Let's send this. Now we have our role ID here. So we can go back to our environment variables, update a role ID. Now we can assign a role to a user. So let's change this role ID to our environment variable, role ID. And let's send this off. Now you can see that we've assigned a role to a user because we have the application ID, the role ID, and the user that we've assigned it to. So our application right now is very insecure. Anybody can just create roles and assign them to users. Now we need to add a guard to these two endpoints to say that only users with these permissions can do that. So let's go back into our server.ts. And inside of here, I'm going to import guard from fastify guard and then I want to register our fastify guard so inside of our plugins I'm going to say app.register and I want to register our guard now there's a few properties that we need to define here one is going to be our error handler so I want to have a function here and it's going to return reply send and we're going to get our result here our request and our reply so now we can use our reply and I just want to return a string you can not do that okay so now we need to tell guard which property in the request we can find our user. So I can say request property, and this is going to be inside of user. Now we need to add this user to our request property. So now we need to tell it inside of our user where we can find our scopes. So I'm gonna say scope property, and we just created this inside of scopes. So remember inside of the JSON web token, we have an array here of scopes. So now we need to add a hook. So for on every request, we attach the user to the request. So let's say app.addHook. And our hook needs to be on request. 
Then we have an async function. And inside this async function, we're going to have our request and our reply. And we need to get our auth header. So I'm going to say const auth header is going to be equal to request dot headers dot authorization. So we're going to put our bearer token inside of our authorization header. And I'm going to show you how to do that later on. So if not auth token, so if not auth header, sorry, we're just going to return out of here. We don't need to do anything else. The user is not verified. Otherwise we want to try and we can catch. I'll say const token is equal to auth header dot replace. Now I want to replace the word bearer and I just want to replace that with an empty string here because our auth header is going to include bearer with this space. Then I want to decode the user. So I want to say const decoded is equal to jwt.verify. We need to import JWT, so import JWT from JSON web token. Now I want to pass in my token and my secret was just secret. So you should replace this secret or even better use a different signing algorithm. Okay, so now I want to say request.user is going to equal our decoded. So TypeScript is complaining and this is because user doesn't exist on request. So there's two things we should do here. One, keep TypeScript happy. And then two, keep Fastify happy. So what I mean by keep Fastify happy is we're going to mutate the request here. That's not a good thing. That takes time. It means we're going to have to rebuild the request. So we want to tell Fastify, hey, put this user on this request object and then we're going to modify it later on. So they say app.decorate request. I want to decorate it with a user. And for now, I'm just going to assign it to null because our user is going to be an object and null is an object. So we're not actually changing the type there. Next, I want to create a type for my user. And this for now can just have an ID, which is going to be a string. It can also have some scopes, which is going to be an array of strings. You can add the other properties here if you like. Now we need to tell Fastify's types that our user is going to exist on our request. So I can say declare module, and the module that I want to declare is Fastify. And I want to say interface Fastify request. And this request is going to have a user and that user's type is going to be user. Okay, so TypeScript still isn't happy and it's because string or JSON payload is not assignable to type user. So it knows that request.user should be a user, but decoded here is just a string or JSON payload. So let's just say as user. And now both TypeScript and Fastify are happy. So we have a guard set up. Let's go use this guard on our request. So let's go over to user routes and when we assign a role to a user, we have our schema, but we also need a pre-handler here. And our pre-handler is going to be app.guard.scope. Now we need to define the scope that the user needs to have to be able to make this request. So I can say permissions, and then inside of permissions, I want user role write. Now TypeScript is complaining because our handler here has a different type to this post request here. So we can fix that inside of post. We can add our generic for body, which is going to be assign role to user body. Now TypeScript is happy. Okay, so we also have another route inside of roles that we need to add a guard to. So I'm gonna say pre-handler, and this is going to be app.guard.scope. Now we need to define the scope that the user needs to have. So this is going to be an array and this is permissions dot. So we want a permission here for role create. So let's go into permissions and I want to add another comment for roles. And I want to say roles right. So this user needs to have this roles right permission. Dot roles right. Again, we have this same issue. So we can add our generic here for body. And this is going to be create role body and TypeScript is happy. 
Okay, so let's go back to Thunder Client and we can test this out. So I want to create a role just like we did before, but this time we have no authentication. So we get our message here, you cannot do that. Okay, let's try login. So we get our token here. Now let's go over to create a role inside of headers. We're going to have our authorization header and our authorization header is set to this variable here. So let's go into env and we can define that variable. So this variable is going to be our JWT that we created earlier. So we're still getting this message. You cannot do that. And that is because we just created that permission. We have no users that have that permission. So let's do this from the start. Let's go into our Thunder client collection. I want to create an application. So this is going to be called demo. Now let's get this application ID, set the environment variable. Now let's create a user. So we're going to set the email, the password and the application ID. They're going to be the initial user. So they're going to get all these permissions. Now let's log in. I'm going to grab my JWT here. I'm going to come over to env. I'm going to replace the JWT. Now let's try to create a role. And you can see that you can create the role here. So there's one other issue that we're facing here. In the body, we have our application ID to create a role, but this is not what we want because I can just put in any application ID here. And now because I have the permission, I can create a role for any application. We need to remove this application ID here from the request body, and we need to infer it from the JSON web token. So let's remove that. And from our role routes, from our role schema, we need to remove the application ID. I'm just gonna comment that out for now. Now inside of our role controller, our application ID no longer comes from the body. We're gonna say const user is equal to request.user and our application ID. So const application ID is going to be equal to user.application ID. And we can remove that from the body. This is complaining because we haven't defined that on our user. So let's go do that. So now that we've inferred this application ID from the user, there's no way to inject a different application ID. If you're using the application ID on an authenticated route, it's always best to infer this from the user instead of accepting it in the body payload. So let's go verify that this still works. So I'm gonna come over, try to create a role. And you can see we get duplicate key error violates unique constraint role name for this application. That's what we expect. We know that it's passed the route and it's tried to send this off to the database and the database has said, uh, uh, you can't do that. So let's do the same for our assign role to user. So I'm going to remove the application ID here. I'm going to come over to my user schema. I'm also going to comment out the application ID for this request. I'm going to remove the application ID from the request body. Let's say const application ID is equal to request dot user dot application ID. Okay, so now let's assign a role to a user. So let's go over to Neon and see if we can find any roles for this application. I'm just going to grab the application ID out of our environment variables here. So we have this super admin role. Let's copy this ID, paste it into our role ID. Now let's register another user. So I'm gonna come over to Thunder Client. I'm going to create user two. Now let's use user one to assign a role to user two. So I'm gonna grab user two's ID here. I'm going to env, I'm just gonna say user two ID, I'm going to equal to this string.
Now let's assign a role to our user ID. And this is actually going to be user two ID. Let's try login as user one again. And we need to replace our JWT. So let's go check our JWT and see what permissions we have. We have user roles right. So let's go check what permission we used on our guard. So go to user routes, user roles right. Okay, so let's console log our user and see what's happening here. So console.log, console.log, user, it's going to be our user, actually going to be decoded. Let's give it to Thunder Client. So the issue here is we don't have our authorization header attached to the request. So that's obviously not going to work. So what did we call this environment variable? We called it authorization. That looks correct. All right, let's try this. And now we can assign a role to a user. So that is how to create a multi-tenanted role-based access control authentication API. Again, thank you to Neon for sponsoring this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a thumbs up and make sure you hit that subscribe button because it'll take you two seconds, but this video took me hours to produce. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.